Hello, the internet. Happy Friday and welcome to another episode of Enter the Popverse. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson, your video producer and host here in the Popverse. If you didn't know, the Popverse is, of course, a virtual realm created by Read Pop. And Enter the Popverse is our weekly chat show where we wrap up all things pop culture news, talk to incredible people, and talk live to you viewers in the chat. I want to let you know that if you are interested in any of the stories, anything that we talk about today, and you want more details, of course, don't forget that we have a whole website dedicated to all of this fun, amazing stuff. And you can always read the full story with more details over at the popverse.com. We also create a ton of exclusive videos and pictures and feature articles that you can get complete access to by getting yourself a Popverse membership. The Popverse membership gets you all kinds of fun, exciting bonus benefits, and it also gets you access to fun things like our live events. So if you can't be somewhere incredible like New York Comic Con in person, you can be there virtually from anywhere in the world, maybe even from space. I honestly don't know what the internet is like on the ISS, but if you're watching from the ISS, um, please let me know because that would be really cool. Um, honestly, and our reach would be way better than I thought it was. <laughs> Speaking of live events, we know the big one is coming up, but if you are a West Coast Magic the Gathering fan, this coming week, so next week in Las Vegas, Nevada, I am going to be at MagicCon Las Vegas. Please come and play Lord of the Rings Magic the Gathering with me. Please come have an amazing, fun, happy time from September 22nd to the 24th. There's some championship games. I can't wait to come and geek out with all of you. And then, of course, right after that, we're going to be at New York Comic Con, October 12th to 15th in the greatest city in the world. I am hosting the Ewan McGregor Spotlight Panel and a bunch of other stuff that we're announcing and rolling out between now and then. If you can't be at the Ewan McGregor Panel Live, you can see it with a Popverse membership. So get your ticket or get your virtual ticket and make sure that you never miss out on a ding-dang thing that we are getting up to. Top of the morning to you, Jake Hefner. I hope you also have a wonderful weekend. Tom Trainer, how's it going? It's going so good. How how's it going with you? Yeah, West Coast Magic the Gathering fans. Dun, dun, dun. Shout out to all the Geek History Lesson listeners who do nothing but make Geek History Lesson references in the chat each week here for Enter the Popverse. All right, my friends. I can't believe we are now old enough at a mere 31 weeks old, not even full term yet, to be able to invite back one of the incredible guests who we've had before, a dear friend of mine, an incredible comic book writer, and I feel like the king of all things genre. He's got his fingers in every single thing that we are excited about, every single emerging crossover universes that we didn't know we wanted from our childhoods, but we very much did. Please put your hands together in the traditional Enter the Pop vs. Theater Kid round of applause to welcome New York Times bestselling author of Nailbiter, Birthright, Dark Ride, Flash, Batman and Robin, Dark Crisis, Green Arrow, Superman, and now entering the emerging Energon universe. Why? Can you imagine? Okay, please join me in welcoming my friend, the incredible Joshua Williamson. Hi, Joshua. Hello. Welcome back. Yeah, it's awesome. I love being on here. It's good to talk to you about comic books. I know. Other it's, stuff. it's the best. Yeah, but mostly comics, let's be honest. Yeah. I also shout out uh, Graham McMillan, who's hiding in the wings, and I could see was applauding as you made your announcement. So thanks, Graham. Thanks for showing out for all of us. And Popverse, of course, getting us with the drum roll. Josh, I've, I've like got to ask top of yeah. the dome, first question. How did you enter into the fray of G.I. Joe meets Transformers? Oh, um, <laughs> because I started talking to Skybound about this like a long, long time ago. We were just talking about G.I. Joe. And it was always one of those things where I was like, I had an idea for it. Like, well, was I ever going to relaunch it or do my take on it? I had ideas so I would talk to him about it. And then one day, Sean Makowitz was like, well, actually. And then he started filling me in a little bit. And I was like, are you saying you want me to do it? And so we just had this whole conversation about it with him, with Robert. I started pitching ideas. They were telling me stuff. And it actually really aligned. A lot of the things that I had been obsessed with with G.I. Joe were things they were obsessed with, too. You know? And we found a lot Ooh. of common ground on things we wanted to do. And sort of if we were going to be able to relaunch it, you know, relaunch this property we loved, 
how we would do it differently that might surprise people, but still do something, you know, that honors what had come before. I love that story because I know your story as well about how you came on to The Flash and it was very much like pitch the idea and then wasn't that wonderful? And then someone's like, well, you're writing The Flash now. So I oh, feel yeah. like yeah, you just yeah. speaking things into the universe and manifesting them into the world of comics. You know, I wish that were true. <laughs> 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 I, I, you're, you're kind of right though. I, I, I've definitely been really lucky. Um, you know, and it's funny because I had sworn off like licensed books, you know, I was uh -huh. like, I had, I did um, Haunted Mansion, and that was also one that I had tried for a really long time, and I feel like, I guess you said I had manifested, where it was like, that was a bucket list project. I and love your Haunted formed... Mansion book, by the way. Oh, it's thanks. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's, uh, I, I really love it. One of the best treats ever was actually seeing it at Disneyland, like, for sale. You know, I was there with my family, and there it was, and I was like, oh, this is such a such a cool treat and i really because you know I, i'm obsessed with disneyland too um but it's like i had a list of mm -hmm. like these are properties i would work on someday these are properties you know and it's a very short list and gi joe was there you know it was like one of those properties and so getting to talk with you know skybound and talk about what we were thinking about doing with it and how it could connect to the whole energon universe and connect with void rivals and connect with uh with transformers at uh yeah, it's been really fun. It's been, uh, yeah, I feel really lucky that I get this thing that I get. Another thing that I love that I mm -hmm. get to play with, you know. Okay, I also have to ask a question just for me and me alone. Um, will there be, are you hoping that there will be action figures? Let's phrase it that way, based on your versions of these characters. Because the G.I. Joe action figures are legendary. Um, yes, that would be a huge goal for me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's an understatement. Listen, like, you know, there's a lot of DC stuff behind me, the yeah. rest of the other stuff. And like, I have this Duke toy on my desk right now. Yes. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm obsessed with the classified line that they've been doing. Uh -huh. um, they're well aware, Hasbro is well aware of this. <laughs> um, Cause I have, I have all of them. So oh. uh, that is definitely something that has been on my mind. And that's the, that's the most I can say about that. But yes, that is definitely like, it's on my mind. It's something that Tom and I have talked about. There's definitely a lot of in, of uh, thoughts about that. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I really love those toys. And like, I had I got another one in the mail yesterday. Actually, I got this one. It's pretty cool. It's the the Tele Viper. Whoa! I mean, this thing is dope. I'm very excited about this one. I just got it yesterday. But uh, yeah, that would be that would be super super cool because we definitely have like different takes on a couple of the characters. That uh -huh. I think are really cool. Uh, toys. It'll, it'll really surprise people in, in some places where we take things and, you know, we tweak it a little bit here and there based on what we're doing. It'll be uh, it'll be really interesting to see what people what people think when when we, when we get rolling into some of it. Yeah. Yeah. What's your Twitter again? Uh, not not to tell in myself too much, but like I am holding out for like a, a Sergeant Slaughter appearance. We have some great comments that I'd love to bring up. Tom Trainer says, "What's still on that manifest list to work on in the future?" Oh, I can't, I, I can't tell you. I like, I can't because some of it, like, I, this is the funny thing. If it's something I'm interested in, like, I, I have this rule, right, where it's, like, I have to be obsessed with something, you know? Yeah. Like, that's the thing. That's the thing with this. Like, I, I, I was obsessed with it before I got the job, right? Yeah. So it's, like, I have to be obsessed with it. I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to tell you because I feel like it might ruin things that I'm actually trying to do right now. Uh, but, um, you'll, I, I will probably post something like that in the future. I don't want to ruin any of it right now because, like it might uh might give it away yeah okay okay uh we talked tuned. A lot of, Stay tuned. <laughs> we've talked a lot of uh uh gi joe but on the transformer side of things jake hafner wants to know are you team autobots or team decepticons i'm team starscream <laughs> he's, the only, he's the only transformer on my desk right now is uh is this super tiny starscream by the way but this thing is awesome and my son comes in and he loves this one he uh he loves starscream too um but, uh, you know, it's funny, that's, that's a funny question because when I was a kid, um, I always gravitated toward the villains, you yeah. know? It's the same thing with G.I. Joe and Cobra, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, I always thought Cobra characters were super, super cool. Mm -hmm. um, and it is the same thing with uh, the Septicons. Like, I just really, I love the dynamic of the characters and then I just thought the designs were super cool. And so when I was a kid, I had more Decepticons than I had of, uh, of uh, Autobots. So, yeah. No, Starscream <laughs> is dope. Yeah, I love Starscream. And it's funny, like, the, yeah, the, 
the 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 voice and stuff with him and Cobra Commander is just uh, yeah, it's it's super cool. But uh, yeah, I love Starscream. He's always been one of my uh, like my favorite characters in that whole mythology. Has always been with Starscream. Um, okay, we have some pages to look at from yeah. your upcoming Duke number one. So I just want to show them and kind of get your commentary on them if you're open to that. Yeah. So yeah, so the way that I saw the first, there's like a, there's a, yeah, this cover is dope. It's, it's uh, Tom. Amazing. It has a little bit of a, a Easter egg on it. I'm sure people could pick up on it pretty quickly. They kind of start hey. to, you know, some <laughs> of those connections and uh, some of those surprises that are uh, coming. Uh, but yeah, we wanted to just start off straight. We just here's the cover of Duke and just show the iconic Duke that we all know and love, like right on the right on the front cover. All right, here is the next page I have for you. Dun, dun, dun. Well, that's actually page four. Um, and so oh, before really? this page, before this page, um, the first three pages, the way I saw it was like one of my favorite things about G.I. Joe, even when I was a kid, you know, was just like always the opening sequence, right? It was uh -huh. always uh -huh. the music. It was always just that opening sequence of just this, you know, them versus Cobra, but this action sequence. Uh -huh. And so what I wanted to do was at the beginning of the issue, I really wanted to showcase that idea of almost like this action sequence of the, uh, of the book, right? And we get to see who Duke is and a little bit of his history, but then we have kind of like right here, yeah. So yeah, right I here, got right in right order. yeah, you got the right order. All right, so this is this is we're live. All right, so this is the uh, so this is kind of what it was, right? It was like I yeah. wanted to show this action sequence with him, right, and kind of give you a little bit of a history lesson of who this character is, in case you have no idea. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's one thing with this. Like, we definitely want to appeal to. Uh, the fans, the people who love it, and like that's what I looked at too. Is like I'm a fan, so what I what I love this, right? And I, I wanted to appeal to that, but I also recognize like maybe not everyone knows who Duke is, and so mm -hmm. I wanted to give you a little bit about who Duke is. And part of that was well, again with this right here, it was just about like I wanted you to hear the music like right out the gate, you know. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to get that same feeling like when I was a kid, and we would pop in, you know, a VHS tape. A fast forward through that stuff, you know, <laughs> get past all the stuff, and then you hear that music kick off, you know, and it was like that's really what I wanted the vibe with these first three pages to be is that kind of feeling, right? Like I want you to be like, hell yeah, GI Joe, right out the gate, and hell yeah, Duke, and and that's where this the the next two page spread comes in, which is also with a uh, Tom hey. Jordy. <laughs> this was it's one that so I was just like when this came when when this came in. Mm -hmm. I wanted to post it. Um, it was one of those <laughs> things where I was like, when can we show this off? Like yeah. this it right here, you know, and I really wanted to show this art to people. Uh, I'm glad that we're, able, we're now able to get that out there people today. But yeah, I just immediately wanted to be like, look at this, like this is what this book is, right? It is action, you know, it's, and obviously it, the, the thing where calling him a, a man of action is obviously an Easter egg as well. But, you know, I just really wanted to get this, be like, boom, like, this is how awesome Duke is. And again, get that same, like, sweeping, big feeling that you would get, you know, from from that moment of just hearing that music and that, you know, that introduction. But then it was about really showing you who Duke was mm -hmm. at the same time, right? And showing you this, like, this is who uh, Duke is, but then this is what happens on the next page that the page you showed before is the story is a bit about being broken. And so we wanted to show you, you know, the iconic and then show how we are breaking him down a little bit. Right. Like, mm -hmm. you know, something happens to Duke and you know, what happens to Duke is, is classified. I'll, I'll call it that. Uh -huh. uh, so we can't <laughs> talk about it. You know, it's really clear that Duke right here is obviously in a bit of a dark place. Mm -hmm. And so something happens to Duke and it sets him on this journey. And, and that's what these uh, five issues are about. And it's about really putting him through a massive test. I mean, that's how I kind of see it. Like we're really testing him as a person. And then part of that testing him and, and it's really a crisis of faith for him. It's, it's a crisis of who he is and the things that he has always believed in. And in the process of that, that is what leads to the origins of G.I. Joe, right? That's what leads into the origins of, 
you know, the other pieces of the massive puzzle that we're building that connects to the Energon universe. And he starts to get brought into the Energon universe and being and seeing there's some some stuff going on, you know, without spoiling other stuff. But yeah, <laughs> it's a big mystery. Like he gets brought into this mystery and uh it's hard for him. But it ends up being, you know, he's a man of action. And there's a scene in issue one that I love where it's like we really get to show like this is not a person who takes a hit. Mm -hmm. You know, he takes a hit, he gets back up, he keeps going. And that's something with this. And, and it's it's really awesome to watch with him and really kind of, uh, you know, put him through it. You know, he gets to go a few rounds uh, in these five issues. And then you get to see how that's really what crafts him and builds him into the leader of G.I. Joe and introduces him to that world and starts to bring other characters together. And, and I think we've said this um I, I think it's been in press releases and stuff but like every issue we introduce uh, a new character right like we we, we introduced a gi joe or cobra character there's a lot going on without getting too much of the spoilers yeah you know yeah. we're really we're really careful with spoiler stuff because we really want to make sure that you you get to experience it as a book like that's always been important to me too you know it's like i want you to get those surprises in the book i want you to, be able to sit down and read it and then and then have that experience. I'm just like, oh man, yes, like, ooh. like I want you to feel that while you're reading the book. And I, and I think the best way to do that is to yeah, keep it, keep it secret, keep it safe. Not a Lord no. of the Rings quote. I, I know. I you know what? That was Lord of the Rings last night, so it's just on my mind. <laughs> I appreciate the care with which you're addressing, like melding these two universes, which obviously involves a lot of Easter eggs, but. Five issues. There's going to be a lot of time for some really exciting stuff. I have so, I'm so appreciative that you like walked us through our absolutely in the right order set of yeah. preview pages <laughs> that we had. Um, you jumped to four. I was like, I was like, oh, we're going the dark side real quick seven. here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's show the, let's show the bright and fun stuff first, and then we gotta I, bring it down. It, it went to my like most recently opened tab, which was four, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all right. Poor Duke, poor I Duke. Know. Everyone got to see him at his worst first, but that's fine. <laughs> it's very, but that's very. Um, and it's for like uh, uh, Walter White. It's for like we see you here, and how do we get there? So we're gonna you yeah. know, maybe maybe that was intentional. Uh, Josh, funny. before I let you go, I love to ask you. I've asked you this before, so you got to answer differently this time. What are you geeking out about that you're not working on? Well, I'm not working on. I know uh, you're working on everything. So <laughs> what am I geeking out about? Well, Nintendo Direct released a bunch of stuff yesterday, like new games they were doing that I'm really excited about. There's a bunch of Mario games in there. There's like a new Princess Peach game that's really cool. Uh, Winning Time is a show on HBO that I love. It, it's super trippy because like I know what happens, but I'm still on the edge of my seat. You know, it's like I still know because it's the past, it's history, but I saw what's gonna <laughs> happen. Um, Halloween is coming. Mm -hmm. Halloween is like I feel like it's already here, and I need to spend. I'm very excited for a few weeks. I'm going to decorate the house and Halloween stuff. And I have like a whole plan for the outside of the house. It's going to be crazy. I'm really excited about that. And then there's a bunch of really great comic books, um, you know, that are, that are coming out that I'm really pumped about. And I, I read uh, 8 billion genies last week and I really loved it. Okay. That was a great comic book. You know, I, I think it's one of Charles's, uh, uh, him and him and Ryan's like best works. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that right, right now I'm, I'm very excited uh, about, but you know, and one of them is like New York Comic Con is right around the corner. It's right there. So I think that's something I'm definitely very excited about right now. I uh, can't wait to see you in New York, Joshua. I will release oh. you back into the Potverse to what I assume is going to be building a 20 foot skeleton. It's a gates of hell is what I will be doing. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope we'll. Uh, I hope we can have you back at the end of the five issue run, and maybe we'll talk some spoilers. Yeah, well, we we'll gotta talk about Cobra Commander. I know. Ooh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much again. Bye. Oh, sorry, cut you off prematurely. Uh, Potverse also popping a bunch of really fun, really useful links where you can get all kinds of more information about what Joshua is working on. Why the Energon Universe is going to be so incredible why things get placed out of order. You know, we can answer everything for everyone. All right. Now, 
Put your comic sock. Now it's time to do Strike Chalk. Strike Chalk, a proud segment here on Enter the Pop Verse. So, my friends, please join me in putting your hands together in the traditional theater kid round of applause to welcome our unofficial co host back to the show, Mr. Graham McMillan. Hi, Graham. Hello there. How are you doing? I'm so good. Do you like, look, I have. I have two Scottish people in one show. <laughs> my Merida and my Graham. <laughs> and one of us is real. <laughs> Who can say which one? Who knows at this point? What What is time? What is reality? <laughs> um, strike, before... talk, strike talk, strike, strike talk, strike talk. Strike talk. Um, I know it's always the mister. I mean, I, I consider for a long time doing an esquire or a lord on the end, but... Oh, no. That's a level of mythology I'm not ready to commit to in year one. <laughs> Let's not do Lord. That's very weird. <laughs> um, before we get into the latest bit of news, um, how is your New York Comic Con prep going? Uh, my New York Comic Con prep is going nervously. It's really close. It's less than four weeks away. I know. Um, uh, yeah, there there is a lot that I still need to prep. Um, but I'm I'm really excited. I'm really excited to to do the things I'm doing, which I don't think we can talk about yet, but I'm excited, well, I'm excited to do them anyway. <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to that. I will I will tease. Um, if people enjoy our, our segments, Sarah Graham, indeed, um, there, will be, there will be an opportunity in a 3D space to see this dynamic at play. So, you know, come, come <laughs> in a 3D space. The yeah, this is a 2D <laughs> space, Graham, as you know. So we will be fully flushed figures of the future. Um, Okay, so talk shows are ripe with <laughs> controversy right now. Not this one. This one's great. Everything's perfect. Nothing ever goes wrong. Uh, it, it's been quite a week for uh, shows returning when you wouldn't think they'd be returning. And let's be honest, maybe they shouldn't be returning. <laughs> but also just sort of, we're not going to talk too much about this, but there was there's a bunch of um, controversy around Jimmy Fallon going on right now. Mm-hmm. And what all of that means. And then, yes, there are actually several shows, several talk shows that are planning to come back on the air in September. And that is super, super complicated. And sort of at the forefront of that is this announcement that the Drew Barrymore show is going to be coming back. And has already shot. They've already shot some some uh, stuff for the Drew Barrymore show already, even though it's not back until the 18th. Yeah, which I, I have to say, first and foremost, I find perplexing because... You know, typically when you think about the types of celebrity guests who would appear on a talk show, it's TV stars, it's movie stars, it's Broadway. It's a lot of the types of people who are, are currently... Yeah, who are currently not, not showing up for things. Yeah. And in, in fact, so so the Drew Barrymore show is is back on the 18th. Yeah. Uh, that's, the, that's the date for the actual announcement. They've shot some of it already. A lot of people have already said that they're not going to be on. Yeah. <laughs> like, a, uh, even people who could have you know promoted their work without uh strike breaking have because the show came back and because honestly the show came back in the way that it did like mm -hmm. drew barrymore announced the return in an instagram post where she she talked about how she owns the decision but she also said i don't know if you saw this i want to be there to provide what writers do so well which is a way to bring us together or help us make sense of the human experience she says this on a show where like she's strike breaking. This is this is a WGA show. Yeah. So I do want to. There's also part of her statement where she she sort of alludes to the fact that like talk shows and variety shows don't operate under the same rules as either reality television or scripted television, scripted narrative. Yes. Yes. Both of those things are true. Mm -hmm. um, that is absolutely true. You are under different contracts with different restrictions yes. and different rules. However, however, um, it is still a SAG contract and it is still a. WGA contract. Um, There's three WGA writers on the Drew Barrymore show. Yeah, there, there is indeed. Um, and uh, Christina, I'm so sorry, I can't remember your last name. The head writer, she actually released a really great statement about what this is going to mean. Um, and we've seen soap operas and we've seen other shows do this, where they're opening up and they're taking non-WGA writers into WGA positions. That's mm -hmm. still scabbing, even if you're not a member of the Writers Guild of America. And the WGA and SAG have said that if you do that. Um, you will not be able to join the union, which yeah, yeah, it's so it's it's essentially like if you ever do this, you're you're done, you're dead to us. Yeah, um, so. which feels like a very short sighted because I do think that you are going to get the studios saying, 
oh, now is your opportunity to come and work for us. And for anyone who would be tempted because, yeah. you know, it would be a big break. Yeah. It, I, like, it legitimately would be. We shouldn't underestimate that. The fact that you are then pretty much creating, like, career suicide for yourself by shutting yourself off for all these future opportunities. Yeah. You'd hope make people, give people pause. It's It's also difficult because not only then do you have Drew Barrymore, who's obviously a very big public figure, who is scabbing as a member of SAG. I believe she's also a WGA member, but she comes from, she's encouraging, as you say, like a bunch of people who are who are keen to break in, who are keen to raise their rate. This would be a great credit for them. So she, she's, she's encouraging them to scab. So she's hurting these people who are maybe less affected by the strike. She's hurting everyone affected by the strike. But because she comes from this long Hollywood legacy, if you look back at John Barrymore, her grandfather, he's um, one of the figures most responsible for sort of um, raising SAG, the Screen Actors Guild, up to the level of protections that it provided in the yeah, first yeah. place. Yeah. Well, what's really interesting is when she did the statement that announcing it was coming back, she portrayed it as this bigger moment. Yeah. You know, yeah. she talked about how uh, it, it has my name on on it, but it's bigger than just me. And she she really presented it as like, you know, not to be too hyperbolic, but a, a sense of like, you know, well, if I don't do this, we're never going to move forward as a country. <laughs> Which was this astonishing moment that I think backfired really, really badly on her. I, I think that it, it's it's really it if she thought it, this was going to be the moment to come together. And, and, you know, sing Kumbaya, the very opposite. No, 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 Graham. Sing Imagine, please. Let's go with a more contemporary reference. <laughs> um, but, but I also, you know, I think the reason that the blow is coming down on her is because she's probably the most prominent figure. Mm -hmm. As you say, the way the announcement was handled. And, and let's be honest, like, she is getting extra backlash because she's a woman. Like, part of this yes. is misogyny and internalized misogyny because um, Bill Maher is also coming back. But... Obviously, a different person with a different persona who is viewed very differently. Say, arguably, Bill Maher was already hated. Y yes, Cor yes. Correct me um, if I'm wrong on the timing. She, he announced that after Drew Barrymore. Was out, he right? did. Um, Jennifer Hudson is also coming back with her talk show. I believe Tamron Hall has never gone off the air. I believe either the, the view, view or is, the talk. The view is coming back. Yeah. It's, yeah. The view is also coming back. It is one of those things where I think that, and part of it is we're in the fall season now. You know, so so the the summer break that gave a lot of people cover is over. So a mm -hmm. lot of people do have to make the difficult decision, and in many cases, it's not their decision, right? Like you know, the, the studios are involved, networks yep. are involved. Yes, are the AM, AMTPT, whom is causing this whole strife to begin with, yes, is are still definitely, very much involved. Yes, yeah. Um, but it, there is this thing where all of a sudden people have to make a decision: Are we coming back? Or are we not? And I do mm -hmm. understand on some level, the idea of, like, it is more than just Drew Barrymore, right? There are other staffers who are going to be working because of this that would not be working otherwise. I get that. Yeah. However, I like I think you're on the same page as me, where it, it also feels like a very public way of saying, I'm not, you know, I stand with you, but only to a limited degree. Right, or, or these rules just don't apply to to me personally like like that's cute for you but i yeah. be, because i am representing the brand of this show it, it's somehow held to a different standard i would also like to acknowledge that there is definitely a way that any talk show could come back without strike breaking um one of the ways um that jim i want to make sure i'm getting my jimmy's right jimmy kimmel mm -hmm. is paying his staff out of his own pocket and i believe um I'm not sure, but there might be like a different type of contract involved. And so that circumvents a lot of the needs of the, or he's making sure that they're still paid. And that's a way that he's sort of dealing with that. Um, there is a lot of stuff that is filming actively right now because they have reached out to SAG and the WGA and they've agreed to interim agreements. So like mm -hmm. there is a way, especially like this isn't what we're doing here today. This isn't a YouTube show. This isn't a podcast that's produced by all the people that you see on screen. Like this is a humongous corporate entity with teams and teams of people at its back. There is a way that you, in, I'm sure it would take some time, red tape, corporations, guilt. Yes, yes. It's all very true. But I think there is a, a fairly straightforward and uncomplicated way that you could simply bring a show back by following 
guild prescribed rules and and yeah. signing guild prescribed contracts but obviously at a certain point in the breakdown and i'm not saying that drew barrymore is the one personally responsible for this it's probably a bunch of other people above her as well but there's obviously no interest in engaging with that and it's simply that we're doing this show and it's gonna my fear is that it's gonna reflect poorly on on her as a figure and what her show represents and what other people's shows like her represents namely mm -hmm. like women um but also that it's going to open the door for a bunch of other people to sort of creatively scab like this because they have an audience. And I think that, I think both those things are already happening, to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest. I think if you hadn't had Drew Barrymore make her announcement, I'm not sure that Bill Maher would have made his announcement this week. Yeah. I, mean, like, I think he definitely used Drew Barrymore's cover. Um, we'll see what the long-term impact of this is. It's a very... I was going to say weird. It's a very it is weird. It's no, like but it's, no, but it, no, but it's a very odd time for unionizing the strike in general because this is also the week where Marvel Effects uh, workers have voted to unionize. Good for you know, them. But Good like you know that that happened this week. Uh, yeah. Video game workers are unionizing. Uh, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, Seven Seas workers uh, at the manga publisher, uh, they were ratified. Like, a lot is happening. It feels like it's achieving critical mass. Yeah. You know, uh, the WA strike is still going on. Like, the, the SAG strike is still going on. There are more and more and more of this is happening. One of the things I think the studios and the, the uh, movie producers, auto workers, thank you very much. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, one thing that I think the studios were really looking for and hoping would happen was the support would die away and yeah. that's just not happened it's yeah. not happened uh every survey that has been happening has shown that support is either steady or is growing yeah you know and i think that reflects that there is a critical mass not only in entertainment media across the country right now Oh no, we can't like... do we can't do workers' rights in a post-capital <laughs> society, Graham. This is... <laughs> no, but it, but it's this weird thing that's happening. We are like we're achieving something that I yeah. think is going to be is going to be something that is not going to go away quickly. But yeah. I do think that the studios and the producers genuinely thought we'll have the summer, and then by September everything will be fine. Yeah, we'll have yeah. an answer, and we're no closer to an answer than we were when the strike started. No, I mean, look, and, and, you know, for for in the interest of transparency, because we're speaking directly, you know, to our audience and stuff, like, we as as people who are going to New York Comic Con next week thought the same thing. We thought, eh, it'll be cleared up by October, like, no big yeah, cause, deal. Because all, like, the, the strikes started before San Diego, and we were yeah. like, well, San Diego is going to be the only big one that will be impacted. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. No, yeah. that's, yeah, that's not happening at all, you know? Yeah. Um, I want to ask you if the strike continues for the rest of the year, whether it's SAG and the WGA or one or the other, do you think, is this a domino effect? Is this an inevitability and we're only going to get more or is this an inevitability and we're going to be getting less because we are seeing a lot of public backlash um, for Drew Barrymore and her team behind this people from internal in within the show are commenting against it. And also the national book awards, uh, where, which oh. she was supposed to host said, we stand in solidarity with all writers. So she's no longer going to be hosting that show. Which was kind of amazing to be honest. Oh, I, it, was, I was, it was awesome. I, like I yes, was publishing. really, I, yes, I was very impressed at, at the national book awards for that. I've got to be honest. Um, I'm, I'm going to be cagey and say, let's wait and see what their ratings are like for her show. Okay. Oh, I, think that's, I, good. I think that's going to be a big deal. I think yeah. for all the public backlash and for all people have been complaining, if her show gets really, really good ratings, yeah, we're going to see more of it. We are. And it will just be people who are okay with being publicly vilified, which, you know, a lot of, a lot of celebrities are because that's part of the job, as, as terrible as it is. I also wonder if um, outside of our bubble of people who either work in or are interested in entertainment, I wonder how much news and how much discussion this is garnering amongst the average human being. Yeah, I, yeah, I wonder, amongst the viewing public, yeah. I wonder if my people... mom even heard about this or cares well, that, whatsoever. That's just it. How many yeah. people who watch the Drew Barrymore show are actually going to A, know or B, care? Yeah. Is a, is a real question. Yeah. And so, again, this show could come back with incredibly impressive ratings because it's one of the few things that is new. Yeah. And then we'll see if there's going to be more of it. Um, I also want to shout out this link that Popver shared about New York Comic Con and some of our upcoming shows because um, 
we work really hard uh, reaching out to the guilds and making sure that everything that we do is respectful and above board. And I do have to say, because we know, Graham and I know a skosh more about New York Comic Con than you might, <laughs> my viewing friends. It's going to be great this year. <laughs> have some no fears, uh, because uh, yeah, you can you can reach out to us. To, you can reach out to a guild and make an agreement. So, Graham, is there anything else that we need to unpack, unfold? I always appreciate having you as a sounding board for these discussions, and I always appreciate having people one stick around to watch and engage with them and ask questions because I do think it's something that is weird and muddied and complicated. It is. It's a very complicated subject. And I think that one of the things, I've said this to you off camera, I think one of the most valuable things you can do in situations like this is not have a fixed position or not have pretend you know the answers when you don't. Yeah. <laughs> so you can talk things through because then you'll discover things. Oh, I never thought about that. And and come away with, with more knowledge. So yeah, I, I very much appreciate you inviting me on to do this. Thanks for uh, literally always saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, Graham, then I am going to ask you, because I haven't asked you in a second, um, what are you geeking out about right now that you're not working on? Uh, I got to read, related to your previous guest, I got to read Transformers issue one, recently, yeah. the, the Daniel Warren Johnson book. It's really good. It's really, really, really good. I I am old enough. You and I had this conversation before, <laughs> before the show. I'm old enough to remember Transformers when Transformers first came out. Uh-huh. Uh, and the new comic is the closest thing I've ever had to being 10 years old and seeing like the cartoon and reading the original Marvel comics. Uh, not because it's a retread, not because it's like nostalgia, but because there's something about what Daniel Warren Johnson does in it that you're like, yeah, that's it. That's the DNA. That You're right. It's not actually this story that everyone's thought it is at all. It's actually this other story and you've put your finger on it. Plus anyone... Daniel Warren Johnson looks great. If anyone from Skybound is still watching this, um, that's a great pull quote for the back of your collection. <laughs> being 10 years old that I've ever gotten. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Graham, one last time. Tell everybody where they can follow you online. It's your favorite thing to tell people. Uh, I'm on the internet. I'm on the Twitters and the Blue Skies with my first name and then my last initial. Or my, oh, you're, you're the initial of my last name. You know what I mean. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, Graham. Always a pleasure. I'm sure I'll see you next week. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Bye. There he goes. Friends, thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you for listening to our discussions today. Thank you for supporting our interview with Joshua Williamson. He is always such a super fun, happy time. And I was really, really glad to have him back today. Our first returning guest, uh, who's not also a pop person employee, because I suppose Graham is probably actually our first official returning guest. Um, Sarah Graham of the Dubious Honors. As I mentioned, next week is Magic on Las Vegas. So if you are in Las Vegas and you see me, particularly if you're hanging around the Black Lotus Lounge, please say hello because i would dearly dearly love to see you if you want any more information about anything that we talked about today i know a lot of this is complicated a lot of this is marred in easter eggs in the description of this video i always link everything that we reference but you can always find this editorials features photographs videos and so much more when you visit thepopfirst.com and yeah while you're there why not get yourself a pop first membership it gives you the most possible access to everything going on at New York Comic Con, especially if you can't be there in 3D. We still want as many Potverse denizens, yeah, you're not residents, you're denizens, from all over the world to be able to come and hang out with us. So I hope I will see you in Las Vegas. I hope I will see you in New York. If not, I hope I will continue to see you in the Potverse. As always, I have been your video producer and host, Ashley Victoria Robinson. Thank you so much for joining us, my wonderful, beautiful, sexy friends, and I will see you next time.